Hello everybody and welcome to the latest issue of Combo Gentlemen, the podcast where we use our decades of being giant nerds to talk about the most divisive issues in our fandom. I'm your host Greg, joined by my constant co-host Dave. Dave, how's it going? Hello. Ooh, so spooky. I tried to be spooky. <laughs> that's 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 the range of my acting ability. <laughs> Give him the Oscar. Yeah. Give him the Oscar. Yeah. Uh, I, so, so, Kevin Feige, if you're looking for somebody... I could be in a Marvel movie. <laughs> who? who uh, this is a complete tangent now. Who would you want to play, either seriously oh, wow. or as a joke? Who? Would as, you... Oh, well, I mean, with all, a lot of characters already over, already picked over. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Probably at this point, probably like uh, in in this version, I guess not the Fox stuff. Yeah, I guess I would have to say like the Blob because I wouldn't <laughs> have to work out like some of those guys. <laughs> You actually have to gain weight. I have to put weight on. It sounds <laughs> yeah. like a lot of fun. It does sound um, like fun. But uh, could yeah, you yeah. could you imagine if you're prepping know. for a movie? You look yeah. over. There's like Hugh Jackman trying to get super ripped, and like Ryan Reynolds, and then you just shoveling McDonald's. You know, I'm getting. I I'm would getting like ready. to play Cyclops, <laughs> just so I could talk to you about how I played Cyclops. Oh my gosh. You never, uh, James Marsden, if you're out there, man, I'm sorry. We can't be friends. You're great and everything else, but uh, I just can't yeah. handle it, you know? Yeah, I don't know what I play. Uh, I mean, you know, I'm always going to lean towards like Johnny Blaze or something like yeah. that. Just, yeah. I, I, you know, I really, uh, it, uh, really embody uh, being possessed by a demon. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But yeah, I mean, that's a good segue. Uh, as you know, we are in the spooky season. Uh, mm-hmm. as, yeah, as from Dave's amazing acting there, we are in the spooky season. So we thought we'd take some time to talk about some of the more uh, spookier leaning comics that we've read over the years, give you guys some suggestions. Uh, and at the very end, we may even scare you with a quick She-Hulk review. Just uh, just at the very oh. end. Uh, very yes. scary. So very we'll, scary. we'll get there. But uh, Dave, in general, what do you what are you with horror? Are you a big horror guy or? Um, I I like horror. I like um. I mean, when we were when we were younger, we watched all the you know Friday the Thirteenth and and uh, Nightmare on Elm Street and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then I quickly grew out of the, the that kind of horror because it was like just that that shock horror like mm-hmm. that like something jumping out at you um and then i really enjoyed i think the first kind of uber creepy one i ever saw was blair witch project oh really uh which was just like it just played on a fear that that paranoia a fear of like what is going on and what's what's out there and then ones like the ring and stuff like it got so much more like c- that creep factor mm-hmm. was so much better but i love horror or like i love horror i very much enjoy it um my wife hates it <laughs> so i never get to watch it yeah i am definitely on your wife's side uh <laughs> when i was a kid was uh goosebumps and oh, are you afraid of the dark were on tv okay yeah. and my sister loved it but i i watched one episode and i'm shit myself so <laughs> i like my parents banned it from the house and there's literally uh writing in my sister's diaries we went back and checked it out and she wrote i hate greg he got goosebumps banned. <laughs> oh wow! So I banned. am banned. I oh, am. Wow. I am so bad about uh, spooky stuff. There's been that trailer for the movie Smile. Mm-hmm. Like when we went to go see yeah, Bullet Train. Like that. Every time it pops up on YouTube or anything like that, I scream and close my eyes. I'm like, <laughs> nope, get me out. It's pretty creepy. <laughs> it looks terrifying. So <laughs> looks I, creepy. I'm. So my recommendations for spooky stuff definitely isn't like. <laughs> On the more horror side, Squirrel Girl. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because she's dressed up like a squirrel, it's kind of like Halloween. There's some people dress up as squirrels for Halloween, so yeah, definitely not the most terrifying recommendations. I'm gonna preface that, but you know, they lean towards more supernatural stuff, and and that's kind of where I took it from. Uh, but let's start with you, Dave. What's your first uh, spooky recommendation? My my first spooky recommendation, um, actually, really, I had to go back and kind of do a, a a big, big deep dive on this one. Just because I'd mentioned it in another podcast. It'd been a long time since I'd actually <laughs> reviewed it. But it was uh, Marvel's original Inferno. Mm, yeah. uh, from uh, Which spanned from 1988 to 89. Uh, the main writers were Louis Sims, uh, Simonson. And then you had, uh, who was on, uh, I didn't even realize she was on like four comics at the time. Uh, but she was doing X-Factor, Exterminators, and New Mutants at the time. And then Chris Claremont, who was doing Uncanny X-Men and Excalibur. Now, those were the main comics, but it hit the whole Marvel Universe. Like, mm-hmm. it was in it was in everything. Uh, and it ran the gambit of uh, two, two of the better artists at that time were Mark Silvestri, who was on Uncanny X-Men, some of his best work, I, I think. Uh, and Walter Simonson was never the biggest fan, but the more I look back on his older stuff, 
uh, it 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 holds up a lot better than I think some of the stuff that he that he has done now. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Alan Davis on uh, Excalibur, of course. Um, I think this 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 one should be a roadmap for uh, for crossover events. Um, there were no books. There were no like Inferno one two three yep. four. It was just Inferno hit, and it was a slow burn. Because I love the way they did it. They started with the, the word Inferno and just the eye was on fire. And then as they got closer to the event, the whole thing started to, you know, burn. Um, it had, like, from the X-Men side, it was basically a, a retelling or a remaking from uh, Chris Claremont's point of view um, of Madeline Pryor and who she was. Uh, and as I started diving into more of that, it was it was just understanding, like, what a, what a cluster uh the the current the current uh world was with some of the editors coming in and saying no you need to do this and you need to do this and it was just a testament i think to the the writers to be able to take a uh a, a big crossover event like this uh and and make it work and with so many writers and so many different characters and crossing over and not make it seem like i'm over here doing this as a character and then oh i gotta stop yeah. And then I gotta be involved in this, and then I gotta, and then I gotta go back, which is what I feel like nowadays. Like I think if they tried to pull Inferno off nowadays, it would be a mess, yeah, an absolute mess. And this could have been a mess, but essentially you have uh, Madeline Pryor who becomes the Goblin Queen, yeah, and uh, all of New York becomes. Uh, now my earliest recollections of this were like, oh, there was just demons came out. No, New York was possessed. That's awesome. There were some great scenes of like, as I was going through, I was like, oh yeah, I remember this and I remember this. A young family getting into an elevator and being eaten by the elevator. <laughs> uh, uh, Daredevil fighting a vacuum. Uh, Wolverine fighting a mailbox. Like <laughs> it was just it complete insanity. Uh, and then some of the stuff that happened, like where it wasn't driven directly from the 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 main storyline of Inferno, um, you had like the introduction of uh, a Demo Gar uh, Goblin. So mm -hmm. it was like Hobgoblin was looking to get some powers and he got turned into basically a, a demon goblin. Mm -hmm. um, and and just a lot of these other things were going on. Daredevil just fighting devils and demons everywhere. <laughs> it was just it it was just such a uh, a terrifying event. I remember when I was when I was younger reading through it the first time and then the second time going through it, it was just like all these flashbacks and stuff. But it was the first one that I remember going like this is uh when I read it originally back in the eighties, it was like this is terrifying. Uh and at the same time it was just all encompassing. Like it, it was the entire Marvel universe was partaking to some degree in some function in this event mm -hmm. and it, it was like to to go back and read it now yeah there were some some points where it kind of went mm, geez okay that was <laughs> that wasn't so good uh but for the most part it holds up it holds up pretty well and i think it holds up as a a good example of like what can be done when you're doing a, a massive event that doesn't require you to read 47 comics in a month because it's all linked together um and i just remember again like the goblin queen yeah uh it was you know you had the demons you had mr sinister you had a whole plot that was going on over there and then you had this whole thing going on in in new mutants with uh with uh, magic becoming dark child mm -hmm. and and you know what and what the, re the repercussions of that were and then you know all these other little comics uh that were just like basically on the fringes going like why are there demons running around um <laughs> they had things going on in their own little thing like it was just it was the it was so well done, I thought, because of the number of writers, yeah. the number of artists. And a lot of this was a slow burn from 10 years ago, you know, 10 years prior to that. Oh, really? As it, as it slowly built up to it. And I thought, like, this is what an event is. You know, it should be a slow burn. It should build up nicely, not just suddenly surprise you. And, you know, we're suddenly jumping into uh, Judgment Day. Um, <laughs> you know, hello. no shade, no shade, you know, and that's it. So, uh, no, that was my first recommendation. If you have a chance, um, even if you just read the X Men stuff, yeah, solid, yeah. Um, it, outside of the X Men stuff, I would definitely recommend the Spider Man and the Daredevil stuff. Um, but it was in Fantastic Four Avengers, like everybody. 
My promise to you is by next time we record the podcast, I will read Inferno. It's I don't get the omnibus. It's you. <laughs> I was just gonna do the app. <laughs> yeah. Like it, it blows my mind. You've mentioned it so many times, and I've even heard about it before we even started doing the podcast. I just I don't know why I just never got around to it. Yeah. So and it sounds right up my alley. So yeah. I definitely. Well, and and what's interesting is I, I watched a guy that uh, does a, a kind of a YouTube channel where he was talking about this. And he he was showing you some of the links, and that's why it got me intrigued because I was like, I gotta go back and read this again. And and some of the stuff that's happening now, even in House wow. of X and Power of X and stuff, has repercussions from before and where they were going with the story. Now, whether it continues along that line with you know what Hickman did, because he's very much that slow burn guy. Yeah. But now that he's kind of on the Peter fringes, off. if not out. Um, I don't, I don't know if that's going to pay off, but, yeah. uh, the fact that it's still relevant to what's going on now is, yeah, speaks to amazing. its impact, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, I definitely, I definitely got to get out there and check it out. Uh, my first recommendation, uh, I'm talking Hellboy by Mike Mignola. Yeah. Uh, I, I like Hellboy a lot, uh, specifically the art. I just think Mike has such a, uh, Mr. Mignola has such an interesting art style mm -hmm. and it really, um, uh, uh, accentuates the creepiness of the story. Yeah. Like a lot of it, you know, he doesn't always fully showcase a character. He'll show like, you know, the face and then the rest of it will be kind of obscured by fog almost. It kind yeah. of looks like, or he's just so good at doing like skeletons and, and demons and whatnot. Uh, I definitely think Hellboy isn't the most spook, like horror element of it. Mm -hmm. What cracks me up the most about Hellboy is it definitely has that element of, you know, don't judge appearances, right? Yeah. That's the whole point of the character of like, he looks mm -hmm. like the Demon King, which he's supposed to be the Demon King, but then he's yeah. actually a superhero and everybody judges him on that. But it's the same thing applies to a lot of the monsters that he fights. Yeah. There's so many instances where Hellboy will go like, okay, I heard about uh, this demon eating the village in, you know, Uruguay or something like that. Then he goes there, runs into a monster, the monster's like, hey, my name's Steve. Uh, <laughs> there's been a bit of a misunderstanding here. And then that's kind of like how uh, it ends the story, which always cracks me up. So I definitely recommend recommend if you've never checked if you even even i like the movies a lot the yeah. movies are, other than the new one but uh i haven't like seen the new one i haven't seen the new I, one I, I much enjoyed the 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 earlier ones yeah uh it was a good time but uh no i definitely recommend hellboy if you've never tried it uh start with like seeds of destruction back from the 90s solid read still nowadays uh i mean they they're still going nowadays right like mm -hmm. they still have some crazy stuff happening i haven't caught up recently but uh i mean i always i'll i'll just look at his art all day you know yeah. type of thing so that's yeah, it's in, it's interesting sometimes when you you have an art style like that that, that uh, you know, I would say, oh, um, put that art into uh, Spider-Man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know, as not... a Spider-Man fan, I couldn't see it. But it, it's, what, for whatever reason, the art just fits the mm -hmm. comic book so well. So well. I mean, he's also the yeah. writer and the artist, right? Yeah. So it's just one of those things where it's like, he just fleshes out the world and it just works so well. Yeah. But uh, like I said, the, the stories are, you know, uh, yeah, the story's not the spookiest, but it definitely uh, has that vibe, you know, type of thing. So. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. I, I mean, it initially, I think, you know, the few that I have looked at is like, there's that initial spook factor of like, oh, what the hell is that thing? <laughs> uh, but to your yeah. point, then it's like, oh, this is just like, it's not what you think. Yeah, it's not what you think. It's yeah. always a, it's always an interesting time. So yeah, what's what's your next one? Uh, my next one uh, actually has it in the name. Uh, and it's Batman The Long Halloween. Yeah, you got uh, it. 96 to 97, which I didn't know originally was, was actually launched every month oh, for really? 13 months. Oh. So it spanned on literally 1996 to 97, like the slow burn 13 issue comic book series yeah. like i i can only imagine uh people losing their minds nowadays <laughs> because, because <laughs> you're releasing it episodically and I, yeah. I hate you but uh jeff Loeb, one of my one of my favorite writers um love his work uh and he's he's actually the the, the writer on two of my favorite batman stories hush being the other one um uh tim sale again yeah. speaking of like art fitting the writing 100%. Just, just bang. Like, I, I was never a huge, you know, and, and uh, I, I was never a huge, huge fan of, um, you know, certain artists. Uh, you know, Tim Sale, so I've seen his, you know, saw his work on on uh, multiple Marvel superheroes. Uh, and um, it, it was, for whatever reason, Jeff Loeb, again, that, that creative, that creative work together just seems to work. Like, mm -hmm. I never thought I'd enjoy... Uh, Spider-Man Blue because of like Tim Sale drawing Spider-Man like I, I don't know it worked mm -hmm. you know and it, it's just it's just uh, um, for whatever reason 
what I liked about this one was, I uh, and I ju I only just recently read it, um, was the fact that it's a mystery. Yeah. Um, very much slow burn. If you're not a, a Batman uh, fan, I would recommend this in the sense that you get a nice introduction to a lot of Batman villains for a very short period of time, but you get that that taste for them. Uh, you get a lot of background information on how how Gotham got to the way it is, um, but the 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 mystery of it, the who done it. Yeah. Even after I read it, you know, I was still going. But was it? <laughs> but was it that person? Was it, or was it this one, or was it? And it was just uh, some people criticized the, the 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 you know the 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 end or the uh, the twist. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was great because it gave you some potential ideas, some ones that obviously make sense, but enough mystery and ambiguity to kind of be sitting there going like, but was it? Yeah. Uh, Which I think was, adds to the experience, right? Yeah, like, yeah, and it was just, it was such a good read. And what I loved about it was it wasn't heavy on dialogue. It wasn't, in fact, some of the dialogue was even repetitive. Like every time they brought, bumped into... Uh, uh, Falcone, it was like Falcone, the untouchable crime lord of Gotham City. Mm -hmm. Like, you've just repeated itself over and over again. But it was just like simple dialogue, but meaningful dialogue that drove it forward. And then at the end, uh, in that 13th issue, just twisting and turning and then yep. leaving leaving the reader going like, okay, I didn't really get a definitive here, but like I feel like I did, but I'm not really sure I did. Mm -hmm. uh, which I just loved. Yeah. No, Long Halloween's a good one. It's definitely one of those ones uh, where even if I don't remember the specifics of the story, I always remember the art. I'm yeah. like, that art really stands out and yeah. really helps it. I also like to think in my head, it's like uh, it's like Hush but Goth. Yes. Like way more Goth Hush. Way more Goth. Very, very, because yeah. yeah, you compare Tim Sale to J uh, Jim Lee, it's so yeah. funny how different they are, but then it's like similar structures of story. Well, well he, it's just Tim Sale's amazing ability to, like, in all of the stuff that I've read, like, I've read. Uh, Daredevil Yellow and and uh, um, Spider-Man Blue, like all of them, he just he he accentuates certain certain things about a character that that just by looking at them you can pick out what their characteristic is yeah. or what their personality is based on just that drawing. Like it was just it, it's it's amazing. Uh, you know, they're very sad that he he passed on here just mm -hmm. recently, but uh, th that collab between the two of them just amazing. And and this is probably. Out of, out of all of them that I've read, I think this is by far the best one. Yeah, I'm really glad we mentioned Long Halloween on our <laughs> Halloween episode. would have been weird if we didn't, so good on you. Uh, my next one, you know, we couldn't talk about spooky stuff without me bringing up Ghost Rider. <laughs> uh, you know, I have to. He's my boy. Yeah. Uh, this one yeah. isn't even in a specific Ghost Rider story, uh, but it includes Ghost Rider, and it has one of my favorite uh, things that's happened to Ghost Rider in a long time. Uh, it's actually called Doctor Strange Damnation. Uh, so this actually takes place after Secret Empire, which we, when we talked about our ranking of the yeah. uh, uh, crossover events, we actually mm -hmm. said it was pretty decent. Yeah. Uh, it was one of those things where like the concept was a little bit better than the execution. Yeah. But uh, yeah. one of the big things that happened in, in Secret Empire is they absolutely nuke Las Vegas. Uh, I can't remember why. I think it was just uh, to prove a point. They're yeah. just like, F you guys, poof, Las Vegas is gone. Mm -hmm. So after the events of Secret Empire, you know, a lot of the heroes feel bad. And especially Doctor Strange, he's like, how can I remedy this? He decides to try to resurrect uh, Las Vegas. <laughs> uh, the problem is it's the city of sin. Uh, so when you resurrect something from uh, uh, the city called the Sin City, it's not exactly going to be from heaven. Uh, so <laughs> no. so uh, he resurrects Las Vegas but it, they were controlled by Mephisto. Oh. So he inadvertently allows Mephisto onto the mortal plane, mm -hmm. uh, which sets off, of course, red alarms everywhere. Everybody's like, it sounds like shit. a very Doctor Strange thing to do. It's a very Doctor Strange thing to do. <laughs> uh, the best thing about this Doctor Strange book is Doctor Strange is barely in it. Yeah. <laughs> he's actually, he's in the beginning, he sets everything off, yeah. but then he immediately gets captured by Mephisto because no. Mephisto's like, I'm not going to let you put me back. Put so me, he, yeah, you're exactly. locked in a tower. Yeah. That and there you go. So then you have this issue of uh, all these demons and shit are in the real world, including Mephisto. So, of course, all the Avengers are like, we got to go deal with this. 
One of my favorite things of all time about Ghost Rider is if you apply a flaming skull to any other superhero, it immediately looks amazing. They then Ghost Rider all of the Avengers because the Fisto like basically goes, "Hey, guess what? I'm super powerful. You all belong to me now, bitches." And he Ghost Riders all of them. Yes. And it's so cool. Like the artwork is amazing. Uh, it's actually written by uh, Nick Spencer, who did oh. um, who did Secret Empire, yep. and Donny Cates. Donny Cates have to help yeah. out on this uh, as well. Nick Spencer also did the uh, the run on Spider Man. Yeah, uh, the so last run on Spider Man that was amazing. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty cool. Uh, I'll show you some artwork. Look at this. Look okay. at this. You gotta love that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Check it out if you haven't seen it. But it's like Captain Marvel, freaking Black Panther as Ghost Rider, uh, yeah. uh, Jane Foster, Thor. So then um, uh, Wong uh, is like, oh shit, what did he do now? So then he gets together the Midnight Suns, but it's not even like the traditional Midnight Suns. It's like Scarlet Spider and like a couple other people, plus, you know, and Blade and like a bunch of people. It's like, okay, we got to go either save Doctor Strange or he can revert all this or at least, you know, try to figure out a way to stop Mephisto. So then they go to, uh, they go to Las Vegas and it's just this all out brawl between Ghost Rider and Avengers versus other heroes mm -hmm. uh, and all this stuff. Uh, plus, uh, this is my favorite part, uh, cause I don't think you're going to read it, but just, I don't know. You might, I, I'll probably read it. You'll probably read it, but yeah. it just, it, this is quick spoiler. Uh, I just can't help myself cause it's the coolest thing I've ever seen. So Ghost Rider, of course, they're like, Ghost Rider, Mephisto's here. You gotta go help us out. So Johnny Blaze is like, yeah, let me do it. So he revs his <laughs> engine. He goes shooting straight towards Mephisto and he's like, I'm going to kick your ass. And Mephisto's like, dude, I gave you your powers, snaps his fingers, takes away his powers, knocks him off a tower and kills him. Ooh. So then Ghost Johnny Blaze is dead. The rest of the heroes are like, oh shit, that was our like ace in the hole. Like, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Turns out they they planned that to happen because the whole plan was, wait, if Mephisto's on Earth, that means he's not in hell. So Johnny Blaze goes to hell oh. and takes over hell, ah! which yeah. then leads into him being the king of hell. Yeah. That's his storyline yeah. for the next uh, few volumes of uh, Ghost Rider. So yeah. it's just a really fun, uh, really quick like oh, cool. series of you know just ghost riders everywhere uh demons everywhere it's just it's just it's a good time. giving me visions of uh like if you've ever watched the tv series the stand like mm. las vegas just completely deplorable and yeah. horrible uh just with demons and, just and, with demons and, 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 and superheroes and whatnot. yeah it's a really just... good fun read so i'll lend that to you so you can check it out it's good times cool mm -hmm. what's your next one dave uh my next one would be and i feel like if i didn't mention this i'd probably i'd be i'd be lynched by somebody uh was the is the walking dead mm, wow uh, yeah the entire the entire series uh which ran i was surprised because i didn't even realize it went on this long 2003 to 2019 2003 yeah, 193 issues wow um uh obviously robert kirkman yeah uh wrote it uh where i i don't know why they give tony Moore and uh, not to insult tony tony Moore uh any great artist well they did the first six issues Oh really? Uh, yeah, and then and then it was basically after that uh, it was Charlie uh, Adler mm. uh, that did the rest of the, the <laughs> almost rest all of it, the, the rest <laughs> of the book. Uh, but what I loved so much about this, and and it, I I got into this in reverse order. Halloween night, way back when, the first episode TV series of Walking Dead started on Halloween. Mm. And I remember vividly sitting down with my brother going like, okay, zombie show, You're right? Didn't know much about it. I uh, knew it was based off of a comic somehow. Uh, we sat down and watched it. And it was, it, I was just, after that, I was hooked, still watching it, mm -hmm. uh, even though it's somewhat horrible uh, at this point. They just keep dragging out that last it's, couple well, episodes. This last season is just <laughs> getting it over with. Yeah. Um, but no, what I, what I really liked about it was like when it originally started, it was, it's about the zombies. It's like, oh my God, we're running from zombies, ah! you mm -hmm. know, but then it quickly starts to shift into like, well, no, the zombies aren't really the problem. Zombies are a problem, but they're no different than like, uh, you know, rabid animals running around, you know, a, being attacked by a bear or something like, that. <laughs> you know, it's just a lot of them wandering around. Yeah. Um, but it becomes like the people and how quickly society just falls apart on itself. And I know I've had debates with people over there like, oh, that wouldn't happen if, you know, like if not so much a, a zombie apocalypse, which is some kind of an apocalypse. So I'm like, I don't know, like we're, we're on a razor's edge when it comes <laughs> to society and, and, and just watching how things break down and how people try to build it back up and then it gets smashed down again. Mm -hmm. And really it just becomes a, a story about how in all honesty, hor horrible human beings are <laughs> to each other uh, in a crisis time. It just becomes very much a, um, I'm out for me. Yeah. And like, as long as you and I are on the same page right now, okay, we can team up, but 
you better watch back because yeah. I'll, I'll stab you if I have to. Um, it's just, it, it's by far my favorite zombie genre thing that I've, yeah. that I've, that I've seen. And, and I watched all the Night of the Living Deads when I was a kid uh, and they were stupid as <laughs> stupid could be. Um, but it was, it, it, it's just, they did such a good job of capturing uh, the comic book, even though it deviated a lot from yep. the comic book. But the comic, going into the comic book, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about, like, okay, well, I've seen the TV. No, I actually ended up liking the comic book even more. Yeah. Um, and, and just the character development, the fact that, it, like, you'd like a character, but nobody was safe. No. Like, the only one you knew was safe was the, 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 the hero of the story. And even some horrible stuff happened to him. Mm -hmm. But it was just, like, nobody was safe. Anybody could die at any moment. And in the most ridiculously unexpected way. Yep. Uh, it was It was just great it was genius and i loved the fact that he just all of a sudden one day just went yeah i pulled the plug yeah and it's over yeah my uh my dad was a huge fan of the mm -hmm. uh more mainly the comic as yeah. like he does he does watch this show still but i remember him calling me and he said like it's over i'm like what mm -hmm. are you talking about he's like yeah it just ended and i'm mm -hmm. like what really he's like yeah they just ended the the comic yeah. he no warning whatsoever just yeah. here's the last issue poof, done which is crazy to me yeah so, I mean, if you like zombie horror, especially, yeah. this is, uh, in my opinion, one of the better ones out there. There's, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to put it up against, you know, some of the, the old, 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 old classics that are that are very well loved. I'm just saying this one for a modern mm -hmm. time zombie horror. Well, like you say, one of the yeah. most interesting parts about Walking Dead isn't the fact that, like, they're zombies. It's the mm -hmm. fact that, like, the zombies are almost just a natural disaster. And, yeah. and it's the people that are the problem. Like, yes. That's the biggest pull of it. Yeah. Uh, I The one thing I'll say about the comics over the show, because I, I read uh, the first few, uh, way better pacing, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Like, isn't wasn't it season two of the show? Just, pfft, like... Yeah, pfft, yeah. The show, the show just, like, I remember at one point, like, I watched the whole first season. I was like... <sighs> I got into the second season and I actually stalled. Like I was watching it episode to episode and then it, it just hit after about three or four episodes. I was like, that this is just like, it's killing me. Mm -hmm. uh, and it wasn't until after that season it ended, I think season three was just starting that I went back and watched the rest of it. Although I do have to say season two has probably one of the most heartbreaking in the TV series has one of the most heartbreaking moments mm. in the entire show. Interesting. Uh, even to date. Uh, mm -hmm. when they find uh, spoilers uh, when they find the daughter of, uh, uh, of one of the characters um, I think it was Sophia uh, that they've been looking for the whole time trying to find her because because she got separated from the group and she's a zombie in the barn mm -hmm. and she comes out and it was just it was I remember seeing that and I was like oh my god that is, that is horrible yeah it was just it, it, was, it was so well done yeah. but comic book I, I would still like if I was gonna get to say one or the other, I said read the comic. Yeah, it's a it's a good read for sure. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, on to my next one. Uh, the annual Greg tries to push manga on the oh, <laughs> on the podcast. So this one, if you're listening, you've probably heard of it. Uh, but I'm gonna give you the 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 lowdown anyways. It's called Chainsaw Man by Tatsuki Fujimoto. This is the most anticipated anime of the year, uh, but the, the manga itself has actually been going on for uh, 2018, I think. Actually, I think it's over. Uh, the Because that's a crazy thing about manga, Dave, uh, compared to comic books. It actually ends. Uh, <laughs> whereas, but then but, it just starts again. No, it doesn't. a whole other thing. No, it doesn't. That's just, <laughs> and that's the manga it. just keeps going well, no, no, in different like, directions. It's a, whole, it's a whole different thing. But like, <laughs> but like what I'm saying is like this specific universe ends, yeah. whereas yeah. Spider-Man's been going on since the 60s. Anyway, yeah. and he's still only like 30. <laughs> it's, yeah, exactly. At, at best. But anyways, so Chainsaw Man is absolutely balls to the walls nuts. It's basically just, uh, you know, you're living in the world that has demons and w the way it works is the, the demon embodies an aspect of, um, some sort of human life. Like mm -hmm. there's the demon of blood, there's a demon of bats, there's a demon of chainsaws, mm -hmm. you know, type of thing. And the more scared of, of a concept that humans are, the more powerful the demon is. So it's, it's a very interesting world that he's creating. It's also a really shit world. Like the most important thing they want you to get in your brain when you're watching this is everything sucks all the time. It's like the big thing they push, which is really the true so, core. So what you're saying is if you're looking to escape yes. real life, don't read no. this. No, like just... this is 100% a mix of like the Walking Dead gore yeah. with like Gen Z nihilism, Ooh. where it's like capitalism sucks. I just want to touch a boob. 
you know, <laughs> like, you know, my main goal in life is just to try to get laid, you know, because <laughs> I got nothing else going for me. And that's the whole point of it. But, like, the artwork's amazing when yeah. it when he activates his powers. Basically, like, I'll show you the cover of it. Yeah. He just has chainsaws. His head's a chainsaw. His arm's a chainsaw. His <laughs> legs are chainsaws. That's his whole gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, like, the first thing he does when he gets his powers is he's surrounded by a bunch of, like, zombies, essentially. And he just goes full-fledged and chainsaw and massacre them all there's blood and guts everywhere it's amazing wow. artwork but then it hard cuts to you know the the demon hunting organizations like you're technically a demon so we're going to kill you unless you you know behave and he's just like yeah sure just tell me what to do and i'll i'll do a type of thing and then just, like i said they just gets this shit kicked out of them like every episode it's great uh <laughs> like uh like it's definitely uh like i said the anime just started and you know seeing that animated is just going to be a whole nother level uh, especially because the studio they have working on it is insane, but definitely check out the manga. It's uh, you know the artwork in here is so good, just the way and uh, like I'll show you a splash page here. You know just the <laughs> amount of the amount of gore just going on in the situation is amazing. And like I said, the main horror of it isn't the fact that there's zombies. It's the life sucks. Just try to find some happiness in there. <laughs> just something. <laughs> just something. I like the color blue. Good enough. Yeah, we can all relate to that. You know? <laughs> the, the, the depression of life. So <laughs> that's, that's my uh, my annual try to get try to get Dave to read manga uh, section. So <laughs> it, it, it looked interesting. Yeah, there's a good I'll chance that much. Uh, your niece is going to talk to you about it nonstop. Probably. So I get, will bring that up to her. Get ready. <laughs> but yeah. What's your next one, Dave? Uh, my next one. Uh, my last one because i think i think that my my other one we would both agree on yep um my last one is something i just picked up just just read um because it was just different mm -hmm. and the reason really the only reason i picked it up was because it was written by scott snyder mm -hmm. and drawn by greg capello really oh and no. it's called we have demons oh so i've never heard of so this. what intrigued me about this was the mention of demons yep um and the fact that Capella used to draw Spawn. Oh, yeah. And did a great job. So I was like, okay, he can draw some demons. Yeah. So I'm going to I'm gonna check this out. So I grabbed the graphic novel, which is three, three, uh, three issues. Uh, each issue is broken up into like three chapters kind of thing. And it is a very interesting take. Just a different take. I'm not even mm -hmm. going to say it's, you know, interest is subjective. It's, it's a different take on the eternal battle of good and evil, um, you know, uh, the elements of good and evil, in this case, the elements of halos and horns. Okay. Um, and and that, that, that battle that's going on eternally around us. And it was just uh, different. It was something that I, I, was, I was looking through the comic shop, I was down in Victoria just recently, mm -hmm. And I saw it, and I was like, you know what? I like Scott Snyder, of course, from their from, from their Batman fa uh, fame. And I was like, you know, what? I'm gonna pick this up, give it a try. Yeah. And surprisingly, it, it, not surprisingly, I I liked it. I, yeah. I enjoyed it. And I'll lend it to you. So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna don't want to talk about it any more than that. Uh, but it is just uh, a lot of a lot of fun demons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, probably one of the funniest spoiler warnings at the beginning of the comic I've ever, I've ever read. <laughs> uh, it was just, it was very enjoyable. Uh, there were some people that were just raving about it. Like, oh, this is amazing. This is awesome. Um, you know, and then some people were like, well, you know, like we're a little wishy-washy on it. I was definitely on the side of like, this is, this is very much enjoyable. Um, and it's even more enjoyable because I like the writer mm -hmm. and, uh, which then got me looking into some of the other stuff like American Vampire and, 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 uh, um, oh, there's another one out just recently, Necro, uh, can't remember her name now, but there's, uh, just, it's, they're all by Scott, uh, Scott Snyder and I love Capello's art. Yeah. So I was like, it's this, this art. is, you know what, like at the least I'm going to like looking at it <laughs> <laughs> because because the art yeah. uh and yeah i would it's it's a uh it's a comic that's not marvel not to see that i would recommend to anybody to read because it was just it was awesome i like the fact that you're like i'm not gonna spoil it for you and meanwhile i'm just like this is the best part that happened in the story <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm bad at the book spoilers but yeah. uh no yeah that sounds really cool and yeah that's a great team everything oh, they've yeah. worked on is is top notch yeah who who do you know who published it 
Uh, I want to say it was init initially that it was a uh, comicology comics uh, comicsology the the, uh, the app I guess they released it on the app initially initially and then from what I understand and then they uh, then they went and published it. I do remember I believe on the back of it I saw a dark horse okay uh symbol so maybe it was dark horse maybe it was somebody else but yeah yeah I was just which, curious. It, yeah. it was published it was kind of like one of those weird things like yeah we're just gonna put this up digitally yeah and there was like holy crap people like this <laughs> and, and then they printed it. yeah no i'll definitely i'll definitely have to check that out uh you tease there is one that you think both of us would agree on yeah uh what what is it it was a mortal hulk oh yeah I, I you know what's funny is the reason I didn't have it on my list because I yeah. thought you were gonna talk about it so yeah. I just didn't want us to, to that was my that was just <laughs> yeah. my freebie yeah I have we we've there. talked about Mortal Hulk yeah. so many times it's especially if you're uh, intrigued by body horror man Whoa. they they draw some crazy shit in that <laughs> uh, and yeah. and and just the ideas of like good and evil and like mm -hmm. heaven and hell and like all that for 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 the Hulk that's such a yes. crazy concept but yeah, yeah it was such a crazy concept but it worked yeah like it was it was so uh it was so bizarre yeah like it's usually like a whole smash kind of thing and then yeah. this was just like some of the some of the stuff that it like when he absorbed that one guy oh like, in yeah the side. like there's just like and the, uh, how many times the hulk gets a hole blown through him in this is just Astronaut. absurd <laughs> uh it's just it, but it was just it was very much a horror themed yep. comic that lasted 50 issues oh man you know what else was creepy red she hulk yeah. Every time they drew her, I was oh. like, Bleh. like it was well, so. Well, it's just like, just about every character yeah. that they had in there. It was just like, how can we make this person look like the worst? Sasquatch, Sasquatch, terrifying, terrifying. <laughs> uh, the leader. Yeah. What the hell? Uh, <laughs> Especially and, at the end. Yeah, and then um, uh, Rick. Like, Yo, with his yeah. like twisted bond like yeah and what? then and then he merges with somebody at some point. Yeah, it, like, it was. Oh my god. Yeah, it was. It was just for a super. That uh, was. You know, running around in the main like this was not a like, hey, what if? Yeah. This was like, no, this is running around in the current Marvel universe. Yeah. Uh, and the Immortal Hulk actually, you know, interacted with other characters in other books. Uh, yeah, it was, but it was crazy. One hundred percent a horror version of a superhero. Comic. Yeah, uh, cannot praise it. Uh, praise it enough. My other favorite part about it is how philosophical and deep it mm, was by yeah. Al Ewing. Yeah. Hard cut to what Donny Cates is doing <laughs> now, which is yeah. he's in a spaceship, blow shit up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I mean, there, there was definitely, uh, and again, I think that's what what really stuck with me was that they, on so many levels like there was like that hierarchy like good bad you know god devil thing yeah but then there was also like like who am i you know they, they, i mean they dealt with all the bloody personalities of, of yeah. uh, bruce banner it was just yeah I, it's awesome great great, great read cannot praise enough so yeah those are kind of our recommendations mm -hmm. if you're looking for something in the spooky season you know yep. uh check it out uh let us know what you think about it and uh let us know if you have any recommendations for us mm -hmm. to check out uh yeah. for the spooky season uh, Dave, we have some time. Yes. Uh, so at the very end, we promised we're going to do uh, maybe really quick. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> uh, She-Hulk review. Mm -hmm. uh, let me start with. Okay. Uh, let me start with this one. Mm -hmm. I found I didn't like it at first. And then what I found was it got better over the season because they kind of got their footing of like, uh, you can tell that the cast got more used to their characters and they kind of got a better flow of like, um, what is this, what is this story, you know, type of thing. Like it's, it, you know, it kind of started turning into this, that workplace law drama, mm -hmm. which I thought was really interesting. And I, I, and like, I'm sure you're going to say too, like Tatiana Maslany, amazing. Uh, yeah. like that's the one thing you can never say bad about, uh, Marvel is they have great casting. They're, they're really yeah, good. Who was me. also in, uh, was it Orphan Black? Yes, she, I believe yeah, so. And, and, and amazing job. Amazing. Film. And uh, almost everybody they've hired recently is Canadian. So, you know, yeah. this goes to prove that Canadians are superior. Uh, <laughs> I can't, can't tap that enough. Uh, I, my issue with the ending was I can't tell if I liked it or not. Mm -hmm. I think if they and again spoilers for She Hulk, I guess we'll we'll say right now. Yes. Um, right. If you haven't seen it yet, um, uh, I think the idea of the Kevin thing was funny in concept, mm -hmm. but when they then reverted it back, but didn't only moved it back to the end of the battle. To me, that was like, but you just instead of 
making fun of the situation you just did the situation that you're trying to make fun of like if they had reverted it more back in time so that when she you know found out about who was leading intelligentsia and the fact that abomination was you know obviously being abomination i think if they moved that back more in time and like dealt with that in a different way i would have enjoyed it more but because all they did was just kind of go like eh, forget about it we ran out of budget and just like that was it you know i was just kind of like what a like like you like titania was nothing you know type of thing like it was such a weird ending but yeah go go off dave what, what's your feeling so like we, we've discussed earlier um i'm i'm neither on the like absolute hate bashing end of this and i'm not on the absolute like oh just because it's got marvel's tag on it it's amazing um i think there were certainly some hit and misses uh again uh, the casting uh, was 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 good. Um, what I thought was they came in and they were like, "We're gonna do the uh, like take a page out of the John Byrne run on She Hulk, which was we break the fourth wall. Uh, we're not gonna take ourselves over seriously. It's gonna be funny, uh, which was which is great. Uh, hey, good, one of the best, if not one of the better, you know, better runs in She Hulk uh, done." And, but, but where, where I think they felt flat is like they, they were too, they weren't, it was a sitcom, uh, you know, lawyer show that wasn't as funny as it needed it, it needed mm. to be, at least from my perspective. Yeah. Now I know people that have watched it and it was like, oh, it was great. I, I loved it. I thought it was really funny. It, it just, the humor didn't strike me all the time. There were certainly some funny moments in it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I also felt like the, you know, um, hearing from the actual writers and saying like, yeah, we, we didn't know how to write a courtroom drama and your, and your entire show <laughs> is literally called She-Hulk Attorney of Law. What? Uh, but it showed through because I think there was one, one episode where they were in the courtroom and they were trying to figure out how to you know, basically make this guy, like, confirm that this guy's a schmuck. So she puts herself on the stand to say, like, yeah, he tried to date me and he's a schmuck. Mm -hmm. And the judge is like, you're right. You know, like, <laughs> he's like, you could tell these people had no idea what go on in a courtroom. Uh, it didn't have any of that. Like, it just, I, I was expecting more of a, like, Ally McBeal, um, Law and Order, like, like just s s something rooted there with the humor on top. Yeah. And it just it just didn't didn't land like i felt like it was like the message was also like well what if we what if a person got superpowers but we just didn't want to be a superhero <laughs> right which yeah. is perfectly fair it's a good story that sounds interesting but i felt like they they spent like three episodes of her swiping through tinder dates mm -hmm. and it's just like that's all this person has to them like what about the other aspects like you you spent a little bit of time with the family and I thought like stuff like where they were getting her to like, hey, can you move this bookcase or <laughs> can you carry all this stuff? Like, yeah, like those are things that would happen. Like that was that was good. Like build on that, but instead it was just like, I date and drink mm -hmm. for for like too too much too much time was eaten up eaten up with that. I I felt, and then you know they they wanted to keep the humor, so they brought in some of the villains, which I thought were just like perfect, like Leapfrog. <laughs> And Porcupine Man, yeah, whatever yeah. the hell his name was. And, and you like some of the, it, it, that was great. But then you brought in the Wrecking Crew, who there was no payoff with. They were just a bunch of nerds running around with like techie weapons that just got their asses handed to them in like two minutes. Yeah. Who are, you know. Deserve a little bit more. I, I felt they yeah. definitely deserved a little bit more. And then the overarching story, like I, I, I really felt like this was episodic. Like I could have watched any episode and just been like, oh, that was, you know, that was a thing. Uh, because there wasn't, I didn't feel like a, a, like I had, I didn't feel like I had to watch every episode to understand what was, where the story was going. Yeah. Because I just felt like each episode almost like was self-contained to a degree. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the, the end, they're building a story with the She Hulk's blood and everything else. And then it gets to the end and they just basically go, yeah, we're not going to finish this. <laughs> like all of yeah. this, like these eight, nine issues, uh, episodes, like if you've been trying to follow any kind of a story uh, that was there, yeah, we're just not going to finish it. See, like, and I felt like that just like was, was such a letdown because it was just like, oh, okay. So like 
the funny part was like, yes, you broke the fourth wall and you go talk to Kevin and, you know, you, you do this thing because it's just like, I don't want a typical movie. Like, we're going to yeah. change this. But but I just followed this for eight episodes mm -hmm. about Hulk blood for some reason to get to no payoff of an ending other than a joke. Yeah. That I didn't feel landed as solidly as I think they intended. Yeah. And that's what I meant by, like, if they had changed the ending even more. from mm -hmm. what, Because I 100% I agree with the the idea of the joke of making fun of how every Marvel show ends the same. Yes, it's, absolutely. It's, it's literally yeah. something we've brought up when we yeah. talk about Moon Knight and, like, so many yeah. other shows. And so I was fine with them making fun of it. But then it's like, but then actually do a different ending, which they mm -hmm. didn't do. They literally did the same ending while making fun of the fact, like, haha, we usually do the same ending. But then they did the same ending. And it's yeah. like, you're kind of missing the point of your own joke, you know, yeah. type of thing. Yeah. Uh, so, and and uh, I did feel like there there was definitely a veiled, um, you know, F you to the the haters. Yeah. Definitely in that episode. Which, was it veiled? You know uh, uh, <laughs> I think that was pretty overt. Could worse. Um, but it was just like the fact that that you know again that the 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 writers were bragging about how they knew how a certain group of people were going to react to this this for what they were doing so they just kept diving into it harder mm. as they were writing it it's like okay so I came to see a she hall thing right and I'm not going to say it was like the worst thing I've ever seen in my life it should just be burned and never talked about again I'm just going to say like out of a scale of 10 it was like maybe a 4 or 5 for me because oh, I just really? yeah I just I, I really just didn't enjoy it like as much as I was I was hoping I was with that that humor aspect mm. And to me, it was just like, and the reason why it landed there is because they spent too much time trolling the haters. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you know, I use an episode. Sure, go ahead. But don't do it the whole way through because there are people like myself that genuinely care about this content. And we want to come in and we want to see a show. Yeah. And basically, you turned it into a, a pissing match with a bunch <laughs> of, you know, overgrown children online. Yeah. And it was just really disappointing to see. I, I was disappointed that they decided to go that route and, you know, show them up. And it's like, okay, but in the course of doing that, you just disappointed, you know, a, a casual She-Hulk yeah. fan like myself, because I just really didn't feel like there was anything there. It was something I turned on, I watched, and then half the time somebody would go like, oh, you remember this in the episode? And I go, no. I guess, I can't remember. <laughs> so yeah. it, it, that, that's, where, that's where it landed. And it was really too bad, because like I said, the casting, mm -hmm. there was some good casting there. I really felt like the the whole special effects thing was kind of overblown. Like when you have a figure in the show that's going to be in the show as a CGI that much, yeah. you're going to be able to pick up moments where it just looks bad or just yeah. doesn't look right. But I think for the most part, like the interaction between the CGI and the people in the show was was actually really good, especially when she hit them or touched them or you know any of that kind of stuff. Yeah, there were a couple spotty moments, but whatever. Yeah, like it it, it is it what happens. it is. Yeah. Uh, I actually would be interested in season two because I feel like what they could do with season two is kind of what you're saying is ignore all the haters and mm -hmm. focus on what worked, which was the day-to-day um, -day aspect of the life. And like my favorite part about this season was when they showed how regular people interact with a superhuman mm -hmm. community, which I think yeah. is amazing and something they don't talk about enough in Marvel shows. Because in Marvel shows, you're always focused on the main character who's ingrained in the, in yeah. the superhero society. So I think if they talked more about like how does Joe Blow on the street feel about the fact that there's immortal mm -hmm. people everywhere and like you know a random person gets sucked in a portal you know <laughs> type yeah. of thing like I thought I thought that was very interesting and I think if they focus more on that in season two it'd be a lot better for season but yeah. we'll see what happens yeah uh, I, I, again I think I think like <laughs> I my my biggest pet peeve with the Marvel with the Marvel group especially with Kevin Feige was always the fact is like. You're, 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 you tee shit and then you don't put it out there or you're not, you're not drilling home on the fan service of like staying true to something or you change something. Right. But then what you did is you went and said like, Oh, but these people that hate our shit, yeah. we're going to give you exactly what you want. <laughs> and I, I just felt like, like, <laughs> Why? What, what did they do that got them? What exactly they yeah. wanted to fire them up and get them all p pissed off. But as a, as a fan, like I went in going, I'm interested in She-Hulk. I liked her more, I think, when she was a part of the Fantastic Four, actually. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm interested to see how the lawyer aspect works out with a little bit of humor. It'll be a different kind of a paced show. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, it just, I felt like I was, I, I felt like I was at a family dinner with two 
you know, two family members um, fighting, but not fighting, like just doing things to piss each other off. <laughs> and that was yeah. these trolls going on and giving it like all these harsh ratings and everything else. Um, and, and then them just feeding into it and going, oh, oh, you thought that was bad. Yeah, look at this, you know, and it was just like. I, I, it was something that I just could have entirely skipped because I was just disappointed with their approach. How mad would you have been if they actually had Kevin Feige at the end as opposed to a robot? I'm not entirely sure if Kevin <laughs> Feige is not a robot. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. He's just the algorithm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I don't care. Like, I mean, most of my hate on Kevin Feige uh, or dislike, I can't say hate. My my dislike for Kevin Feige is his his he's pompous. Mm. He, like he just feel he he acts and walks around like he invented the Marvel universe. Mm. And I think I think one of the things that I see and you're seeing it the, the effect of this in the comic books is is you see you know there are no top notch talent writers writing in Marvel or DC right now because their ideas get taken, turned into these million billion dollar you know movies where the director gets all this and he pats on the back along with Kevin Feige for what you mm. took a story from somebody else that wrote it, give them no credit to my knowledge, no money for it mm. other than the money they made for writing the comic. And then you turn it into a movie and congratulate yourselves. Like that to me is just an absolute slap in the face. The only person you didn't do that to was Stan Lee. Cause you had him in every damn movie <laughs> up until the point where he, he passed away. Yeah. And I just feel like the, the lack of respect towards, uh, the writers and the artists that built this mm. uh, it is just has just gotten worse and worse, in my opinion, from from him. Mm, interesting. Uh, yeah, that's kind of our thoughts on She-Hulk. Mm -hmm. uh, let us know what you think about it in the comments. Uh, and yeah, that's kind of end it for this episode. Um, we hope everybody enjoys the spooky season and yes. enjoys our, our spooky recommendations. Uh, the reason we didn't talk about Werewolf by Night is because Dave hasn't seen it yet. Yeah. So maybe we'll, we'll maybe next next episode we'll yeah. um, we'll talk about that really quick. But other than that, yeah, make sure to follow us wherever you found us. Check out our old stuff, and we'll see you all next time. See ya.